What's up, Covalence friends? Welcome back to part three of our series on creating a signable signature input using Canvas. So today we're actually gonna be hooking everything up, finalizing the actual drawing of the signature on the Canvas, as well as clearing the Canvas. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe below for future releases, future series, but otherwise we're gonna get right into it. All right, we're gonna pick up where we left off in part two. We're gonna open up our app.ts and you can see we already have all of our logic for our event listening, for signature start, signature move, signature end. We're gonna go ahead and we're just going to comment out these console.logs real quick. And what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new variable to dictate when we're drawing and when we aren't drawing. So it's just a Boolean value. And basically on signature start, we're gonna to wanna to set that to true. We're gonna to wanna to listen for it in signature move, basically returning if it's not true. And on signature end, we're gonna set it back to false. Now, what we're gonna to have to do is we're actually gonna to have to find our offset value. So to do that, we're gonna to wanna to create another function. So it's gonna say function get offset, and we're gonna actually pass in our event. Now this offset is going to return a object and it's going to have an x value and a y value so we're going to go ahead and just kind of create that stub it out and so what this offset's going to do is we're first going to look for a potential mouse event so we're going to say constant m event const m event equals mouse event ev so basically we're going to cast this event to a mouse event just to kind of get the typescript and we're going to say if not m event dot offset x or not m event dot offset y then we're actually going to do logic for touch event in here otherwise we're actually going to just return the values for x and y as offset x and offset y um, we're going to actually do a little bit of transforming on this too uh, so you know what let's go ahead and actually do it this way let's say um, we're gonna have our let x equal zero, let y equal zero, and we're gonna actually find x and y here. So we're gonna say if that else, we're gonna say x equals m event dot offset x, and y equals m event dot offset y. Otherwise, we're actually going to look at our t event, which is just going to be a cast value of event to a touch event. And we're gonna look at touches, which is gonna to be t event dot touches. And if touches dot length is greater than one, meaning if you have two fingers on the screen, we're gonna to wanna to do nothing. So we're actually gonna just wanna return. So we're gonna return nothing. And then we're gonna check the value of this. And if it doesn't exist, we're gonna do nothing as well. So that essentially is gonna cover that case. We're not gonna to wanna to do anything if more than one finger is on the screen. Now. Otherwise, we're actually going to look at our touch value, which is going to be touch is zero. And to get the X and Y offsets here, we're actually going to have to get our current target, which is our canvas. And what we can do is we can say const rect equals, um, we're gonna cast the current target to an HTML element, so ev.currentTarget, and we're gonna say get bounding client rect. And we're gonna look at page Y and page X on this touch value. So we're gonna say X equals touch.pageX minus rect.x. And then Y equals touch.pageY minus rect.y. So basically, if you're looking at the page, this is going to be the coordinate on the page are uh, disregarding the whole scrolling type stuff. Um, it's going to be your X value and your Y value of this touch point on the page. And now this bounding client rect is actually going to be uh, surrounding the canvas because that's going to be our current target. And this is looking at the X value of that. So if you're going to do the page value minus the rectangular value, it's going to give us the offset value of this touch within the canvas, right? So the same thing as this offset X and offset Y for the mouse event. Now, we actually have our X and Y values, but this is going to be offset values. And as we remember, our canvas is 300 by 600. And so that's not the actual, these values are going to be DOM values, not canvas values. So we actually have to transform our X and Y values. So 
what we have to do now is we have our x and y offset values. So now we have to do what we have to say is our x value is going to x divided by canvas dot offset width times canvas dot width. All right, and that transform is going to give us the actual uh, canvas values in the x y coordinates within the canvas for um, you know where our touch point is, right? So for the y value, it's going to be the same. So it's going to be y divided by canvas dot offset height times canvas dot height, and that height and width is going to be the 600 by 300 that we actually put on our HTML element right here. So, all right, now we actually have our offset value here. So on signature start, what we can say is we can say const chords equals get offset ev. And if not chords, we're just going to return. Else, what we want to do is we're going to combine the logic that we've had for this house code. And we're going to want to begin the path and we're going to move to that value. So we can say ctx dot begin path ctx dot move to cores dot x cores dot y. And finally, we're going to say drawing equals true. All right, now on signature move, we can go ahead and say if not drawing, we're going to want to return right away. All right, else, we're going to want to actually do lines. So we are have already began our path, we have moved to our starting point value. And so what we're going to want to do now is ctx dot line to Oh, actually, first, we're going to get a coordinate. So const chords equals get offset calling the same function. Um, EV. And we're going to make sure that we actually spell that right or put the right uh, capitalization in there. And then, you know, same, same logic, if not chords, return. Otherwise, we're going to do ctx dot line to chords dot x chords dot y. All right, and then ctx dot stroke, because we're actually going to want to draw this on every single signature move, right. So as we draw, we want to be actually seeing the line being drawn, right. All right. And so finally, we have our signature end. So what we're going to do is when we actually lift the value of it, we basically just want to, um, you know, end the path or whatnot, uh, we don't want to close it because we don't want to go back to the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to set drawing equal to false. And then we should be good to go because if we keep moving, it'll stop moving and it'll stop, stop drawing, sorry, and it should be good. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal npm run dev. All right, open up a web browser, I'm going to go ahead, open up localhost, we'll pull up our browser or the dev tools real quick. So right now, we uh, actually have mouse events. So if I go ahead and just say, you know, sig, I am not the best with virtual signatures. But you can go ahead and see that we actually had the mouse events working well. It, uh, it goes pretty well with the whole drawing aspect of things. And we are you know, works pretty well. So if we want to go ahead and refresh the screen, we can say, you know, try and draw my name here. Bam, Matt Morgan, looks awesome. All right, now if we go ahead and pull up a emulator for an iPad Air, this is touch events, as you can see, the cursor changes, simulating touch events, and you can see that it still works. Now, if you didn't do that offset function, if you just did x and y, you would see that it actually does um, doesn't work on touch on with the emulation. And so you need that get offset function to handle the case when it's touch and mouse, right. So this is looking good, we have it working on both touch and mouse events. Um, the only other thing I would say that would be cool to have would be a little button. So let's go ahead and just kind of create that real quick. So we're going to pull up our index.html. And we're going to just add a little div and a little button and just say, um, let's see, 
clear. We'll just call it clear. And we'll go ahead and add a you know, text, let's just say button container. And I'm gonna go ahead and you know give this ID. Well, there's only gonna be one button, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add the CSS for the button container. Let's just say margin top 1M and text align center. All right, and then in our app.ts, what we're gonna to wanna to do is let's create a, another function after on say n function sig clear and all we're going to do is we're going to say ctx dot clear rect and we're going to say zero zero canvas dot width and canvas dot height and then what we're going to do is where we actually add all of our events here um, we're going to grab our button. So we can say, just up here, let's say const button equals HTML. Do we have a button element? Oh, we do. HTML button element document dot query selector button. And then what we can do is when we're adding all the buttons, we can say, or add the event list here, as we can say, if not not button btn oops dot add event listener click our function is going to be sig clear and we'll say false all right so we're going to add that final click handler there and let's go ahead and refresh so we have our clear button now all right so we mess up on our signature clear we clear this we clear the entire canvas and we start over all right awesome get one for the road let's do a good one all right all right well that concludes our series i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you were able to follow along and create your own signable inputs and i hope that you can use this in your own applications now i want you all to remember that these solutions are not bulletproof for every use case, right? So for instance, if I were to rewrite this thing for my own application, I would make sure that, for instance, the case where you know, you're know you drawing and you go off the canvas when you let go of the mouse or let go of your actual pointer, it doesn't keep drawing, right? So there's always gonna be ways to improve this. It's mostly just for demo purposes, but I highly encourage you to figure out a way to handle these cases. For instance, if I were to rewrite this, I would definitely, instead of just doing a mouse up event and a touch end event on the canvas itself, you can move that to the entire document and only add that event on touch start or on signature start, right? And then you're gonna wanna remove that listener on the actual end event. So inside of the signature end event, you're gonna wanna actually remove the event listener that you're listening for um, when you actually apply it on signature end, right? And so definitely always ways to improve that. That'll handle the case where you actually let go of the mouse outside of the canvas. Let's just say you're sign happy and you go way off the screen and then you let go of the mouse. It won't keep drawing when you bring the mouse back into the canvas view. So like I said, always ways to improve this. I want you guys to kind of work on that yourself. If you have a solution you want us to take a look at, post it. I'm happy to, to, happy to kind of check it out and comment or critique it. Um, but otherwise, happy coding and let us know if you guys have any other suggestions for future content. All right, until next time.